we can confirm without a doubt is our equipment is on the surface of the moon and we are transmitting. I know this was a nail biter, but we are on the, si on the surface and we are transmitting and uh, welcome to the moon. Welcome to the moon indeed. A private lander has become the first U.S. spacecraft to touch down on the moon in more than half a century. Intuitive Machines' Odysseus is also the very first private company spacecraft to make a lunar landing. What a triumph. Odysseus has taken the moon. This feat is a giant leap forward for all of humanity. CBS News space analyst Bill Harwood is at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. A leap forward for humanity. I want to dig into that. But even before we do that, Bill, this is the first lunar landing in more than 50 years for the United States. You have a long, distinguished career covering NASA and space. But what was it like for you personally to cover this one? Well, it was, as the man said, it was a nail biter, no question about it. You know, uh, when they came down, you know, we have clocks running to tell us when it's supposed to land on the moon, and there wasn't any immediate confirmation. You know, they were expecting signals within the first maybe two minutes, but as the minutes drug by, you know, you start getting a little nervous feeling in, your, in the pit of your stomach that maybe something went wrong. Uh, but at the end of the day, they did get the signal. The spacecraft is sitting upright on its landing legs or downloading science data. Uh, and we can't wait to see the first pictures. We hope, hopefully we'll see some of those later today. It may be tomorrow, but uh, the pictures should be dramatic. Yeah, I'm really excited about that. But, you know, there was something that went wrong, a sensor malfunction. And you and I discussed that everything mm -hmm. essentially has to go right for it to be a success. So how were they able to actually make this work given that sensor malfunction? Well, at the end, it's, it's kind of a lucky break. You know, among the 12 payloads that are on board this lander, six of them were provided by NASA, and one of those was an experimental navigation sensor. Uses a different technology. They were really just going to test it once they got down on the surface of the moon. It, they didn't plan to use it during the descent. Uh, but the sensors that were built into the spacecraft malfunctioned uh, before they could get there. Uh, they raised the orbit up to give them a little time to think about this. I mean, they went around the moon one extra time to try to work this out, and they ended up writing software patches incorporating the NASA sensor data, which they did this on the fly. It's really kind of remarkable. And those sensors worked perfectly, as far as we know, uh, all the way down to touchdown. So uh, you could say NASA saved the day on this one, even though they were really, really just along for the ride. I love that. Just, you know what, we'll, we'll go around the block one more time <laughs> until we're able to actually <laughs> land on the moon. Um, talk us through the goal of Odysseus's lander mission. And what more we know about its time on the moon so far, how long it's expected to provide uh, right. these, these images back, et cetera. Well, first of all, I think Administrator Nelson, when he called this a giant leap, that might have just been a, maybe a step too far. I would view this as a, a significant step uh, for the American Moon Program. We'll have to see how it goes. But this mission has very limited objectives. Uh, like I said, there's there's six experiments on board that were sponsored by NASA. The agency paid $118 million uh, to intuitive machines to get these sensors to the moon. And they're really technology demonstrations. They're going to study the lunar environment down near the south pole of the moon. And that's where astronauts are supposedly going to land in NASA's Artemis program. Uh, so really just trying to get, a, get the lay of the land, if you will. There are additional probes like this that are scheduled for launch in, uh, in the year ahead uh, and next year. And so each one of these is kind of an incremental step. To, to kind of collect the data that NASA wants before they attempt to land astronauts uh, down there near the South Pole. And, of course, that is the thing that Administrator Nelson is so excited about. It's part of what you and I, Bill, are so excited about. Uh, remind our viewers when we may actually see humans back on the moon. Well, right now in the Artemis program, there's a flight to launch four astronauts around the moon and back, not to land, uh, in late uh, 2025. And then the landing itself, uh, the Artemis III mission, right now anyway, uh, could take place uh, sometime in late 2026. But all of that's pretty, pretty, you know, it's, it's pretty tenuous right now. It's going to depend on getting the spacecraft and the rockets together. Uh, but that's the plan, hopefully within the next couple of years. Absolutely. Bill Harwood, thank you.